What are your specific prayers? Uh, we are asking the court to compel the university to do four things. Number one, we're asking for a chaplaincy to gazette a structure called a chaplaincy for the born again. This is in the spirit of equal opportunity. Just as there is Muslim, Catholics, Anglicans, we want a chaplaincy for the born again. That's number one. Number two, we're asking for land land in equal measure to other religions, to other groups. If they have two acres, we are also asking for a sizable piece of land where we can be able to put two things just like others. We want to put a chaplaincy where we can meet for worship and we want to put a student center just like others are having. Then we also want to have offices to house our students, to provide social services, leadership development, and also to coordinate other minority groups that we see us working closely together. We want to work with other minorities such as the Seventh-day Adventist, the Orthodox Church. Uh, there is other minority groups that are already endorsing and supporting us. We want, we see a vision of working closely with them and championing them as, um, as a, a, a religious group. The third thing that we are asking in spirit of equality, we are asking for uh, similar benefits to a chaplain of uh, the Catholics and Anglican. We want a house for the chaplain. Um, people know that I have often been at Makere. I have to travel every day, almost two hours, to get to Makere through traffic, through a long journey where I live in Kasanji, uh, so that I can be able to serve the students. Why is it that the born again have to go through that hassle when the others just walk from, you know, whether Lumumba near there in the housing and they go to the chapel and serve the people? Sometimes I have to come from prime time. That's the Saturday night event that we do. I live there at about 11 or midnight. By the time I get to my home in Kasanje, it's about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Then I have to wake up again the morning to go and lead a service in the early morning at you know, seven o'clock. So that's discrimination. That's uh, okay, marginalization. Okay. So we want the university to provide housing for um, the, the chaplain. The final thing that we want is interim measures. We want to have interim measures of affirmative actions, which include a systemic review. What are the policies that need to be changed that marginalize us? Number two, can we be given a place as we are building? Can we be given offices? Can we be given a place to meet where we can actually start having meetings uh, while we are building where we are going to meet? We don't want the university to give us money to build. No, we will fundraise. We will put our stakeholders together and we will build our chaplaincy and student center to provide social services, spiritual services to the student community, to the staff community, and even the alumni like me. I'm an alumni. There are many who are supporting the university. Sometimes the university forgets that we are part of what is called convocation. Sometimes people remember you when they are doing fundraising, like when we've been doing fundraising to rebuild the building and we've been fundraising. It's, we, it should not only be fundraising. We should participate in the total life of the university. There are people who graduate and they are still part of the St. Francis community. They keep coming. They keep having the services. We want to do the same. They're born again when they graduate. They want to come and continue to be part of that community, whether they are professors or they want to, to use that position to mentor our students. That's fine. So those are the four things that we are asking in interim measures. What are the obstacles to those prayers? I think uh, born again, uh, uh, when a, a group in power is, is in the mainstream, they look on you as, they, they discriminate you. Uh, President Museveni spoke last Sunday, Saturday when he was speaking in Gulu at the meeting of pastor patients. She had a, a, you know, a three day rally in Gulu and President Museveni went to close it. And he said that when I came to power, other religious groups came to me and told me to shut down 
the born again to close them down because they said they are uh, fake because they are uh, you know they, they should not be and he says I refused I refused to close them down and uh, as I look back many of the born again they have contributed a whole lot to the development social development of Uganda and I'm glad I never got myself involved in that so we are looking at the fact that there are people who they might they, they want to toss us out they oh go and be part of the another group maybe go and pray in st francis i uh, just be underneath but you know when we go there th there's a misunderstanding the born again pentecostals uh we pray in tongues the anglican church they don't pray in tongues they don't recognize that and in fact many students that have been there they are thrown out once they start to pray they're like stop stop we don't do that here so there is a way in which uh marginalization then i think also people have a culture where they expect you to keep quiet that you know live with second class citizen and i'm like no the constitution is here uh the bible is here you cannot deny us our fundamental rights so there are even some born again who are telling us Shh, be quiet don't ask you, you are dividing you, you are shaking the board uh and i just see you know it's it's a second-hand citizen mentality i'm not for that Makere university did not train me to be a second-class citizen no it trained me um a, a first-class thinker and so if there are systemic reforms there is need for inclusion of the born again there is need for us to ask court for affirmative action as a marginalized group yeah that's what we need to do so I just find that some oh, Pastor Semper, why are you taking the university to court? Why aren't you just talking to them? I talk to them quietly. Some of them are like, oh, don't you know some of these are born again? Yeah. Even the born again need to do things best in law. Yeah. And indeed it is true. There are many people who have benefited from our work. And now our 20 years of work, they can be able to be seen. The final thing that people misunderstand, they think I'm looking for myself. They think I'm looking for a job. And on Saturday, someone wrote a silly article in the Saturday Vision saying Pastor Semper is asking for a house, is asking for a salary of $5 million, you know. And when you remove that information, you make it look as if Pastor Semper is looking for a job for himself, he's looking for a house or a salary. Well, that's complete uh, propaganda because if you put that without the context of a chaplain, say, people think you're looking for something for yourself. Or Pastor Semper is ring fencing something for you. No, it's our leaders. They have already endorsed us as umbrella groups. And uh, let me just be honest with you something that annoys me. If I wanted money, if I wanted to make money, my wife and I would have stayed in America. We have green cards and American passports and citizenship to be able to work and live in America. The course that I did with my wife, the course of uh, psychology and biblical counseling, I would take a licensing course and practice as a psychologist. The average payment over psychologist to hundred dollars, eighty to hundred dollars, depending on how many years you've practiced. And if you do that eight hours a day, that's eight hundred dollars a day in a week. That is four thousand dollars in a, a month that is sixteen thousand dollars and in a year it's a hundred and ninety two thousand dollars so if you're looking if you're trying to say pastor semper is looking for money you're just really being ignorant if i wanted money i would have made a hundred ninety thousand my wife would make hundred ninety thousand that would be three hundred and eighty a year and if you think that that's what we've given to makere in the last 20 years Guess how much money we've given to Makere? That is 380,000 a year times 20. That is about 7.6 million dollars. I'm glad we've done that. I'm glad we've been able to do that, to bless Makere. And many lives have been changed at prime time. Many lives have, have been changed who are today in, in public sphere of society. Leaders, so our sacrifices, instead of being condescending us and writing badly about us you should recognize what we have done